Today you're going to meet a beautiful woman by the name of Jan Smith. Jan is a singer, songwriter, music composer, and vocal coach to the stars. She's also an earth angel. <laughs> Jan works with an amazing musician by the name of Jesse Owen Aston, who she refers to as her left arm. But he's not really her left arm. Silly. That would be ridiculous. I can't wait for you to meet these beautiful people on this episode of Baby's Crib. Hello, beautiful people. How is everybody out there today? I am so excited, more excited than normal, because I am in the house of the one and only Mama Jan, Mama Jan Smith, vocal coach of the stars. I'm here with her today. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. <laughs> this is where I would be. This is where you would be. This is where you live. My crib. I love that. I love it so much. How are you feeling today? Good. Good. Very good, yeah. Cool. It's a beautiful day outside and a beautiful day inside. Well, I could give you guys a long list of her resume, but we'd be here all day. I'd need a teleprompter <laughs> <laughs> to tell you guys about what she does. In a nutshell, you are you are the vocal coach to the stars. Hmm. Well, that's part of what I do, yeah. I know, it is. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up. I hear that accent, but I don't know exactly where you're from. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia. I it's was born and raised in, in Atlanta and suburbs here. Yep. Okay. So I'm a southern girl through and through. Yeah. A you real peach. Draw a real Georgia peach. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Georgia really sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me you, how you got into music and singing and things like this. That's interesting. It's always the first question. Well, we need um, to know. Well, D did you out of the womb? Were you I, like this? I, pretty much. I mean, I, I, I started, um, started as a kid and uh, writing little songs and being that kid that was in the family always, you know, playing little beats on things. And that was way back when, before we had computers and beat machines and things like that. Right. So I started playing ukulele when I was a, a kid in, in church camps and all. And then I uh, started writing songs when I was about nine or 10 and got my first guitar and cut my first record when I was 15. And then I was playing rock and roll music. I'm a post Woodstock era girl. My daddy okay. wanted me to play and sing in the church, which I did some, but I, that wasn't my ilk. It was really going to be more okay. singer-songwriter stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. playing in clubs, playing through college, uh, mm. working in bands, doing the circuit, and then started touring. And mm. so really it was about me being an artist. I was always going to, that, that was my brass ring. I was mm -hmm. going to reach for, you know, winning a Grammy and being that artist. And that was your goal. Road. So I, that was what sure. you really wanted from the time you were little. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I remember okay. seeing the Grammys when I was four years old and thinking, Oh, okay. That's my pe that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like those chills, right? They come over you, like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can resonate with that. That, that, feels that was the iconic thing at that point to to you know to reach for. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then started you know singing in in studios, doing background vocals for other artists, working with bands, working helping other singers, doing just the natural part of that, and uh, had the vernacular for it, and developed the the language enough to be able to cross classical information that I had enough to be dangerous to work in <laughs> with rock and roll singers and yeah. it helped and yeah vernacular is really important if you can't translate is. that back and well, what are you telling yeah. me to do yeah I don't know that's you right know? that's right yeah, you don't do you know what the very first vocal recording was well in 1877 Thomas Edison recorded his version of Mary had a little lamb <laughs> he recorded it on the pornograph baby that's the phonograph Phonograph. On the phonograph. <laughs> yes, that is different. Little different. Well, anyway, in 1860, a group of audio historians discovered a version of Eau Claire de Lune in Paris. That's a very long time ago for you earthlings, but not for us angels. Time is relative, and we have all the time in the world. <laughs> Hey, 
everybody. Pooh and Raffy want you to follow, like, and comment on Baby's Crib. Hey, this is Mama Jan. Just want you to know, nobody puts baby in a corner. You recorded your first song when you were 15. Um, what was that like for you? Like, how did you, did you pay someone to go into the studio and do oh, that? Yeah. Or did mom and daddy do this for you? Tell well, me Jerome, about that. Jerome, Georgia. Jerome, Georgia. Rump. So far away. But, <laughs> no, but it was, because okay. then you you couldn't, we didn't have laptops. Right. I didn't have laptops growing up, so we, we didn't have the software I couldn't produce myself. Right. You had to go to a studio. So a friend of mine knew some people in Rome. We went to their studio. I cut three songs, and that was my first Three. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, like EP, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. What were you writing about at 15? 15 year old stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Sometimes we listen to music that's like for adults, and we have a way of like writing this. And like, oh, yeah. well, should I really be singing this song right now? But you're writing about it. It was about love. Of course. It yeah. Was, well, I, and it was about just life. I think. Um, for me, growing up listening to Joni Mitchell, who was one of my greatest mentors, and yes. in the Woodstock era stuff, it, it was really about what was going on in the world, which is kind of you know what people do now. They're writing about yeah. love and loss and what's happening in the world and how they feel about it. So yeah. as a kid, I was unless a, it's trap music, well, you know, or dance music. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, of course. But it, that's still about something. It's about moving. It's about grooving. It you know? is. It is about popping and and yeah. so. For me, it was really more introspective, trying to figure me out, and that's what I wrote about. Were you scared going into the studio? Was that like different than like writing mm -hmm. at home? Or were you like, okay, I've got, I don't know how many chances you had back then. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making you sound like older, but no, you're no, saying no. like computers, like, you know. I like, am older, so But okay. do you know what I mean? I don't know what it was like back then. Like, you know, were you nervous? You, did you have the producer that was in there trying to help you? You gotta get it right right now. Well, I, was, I was really more the producer. It was really, uh, oh. it was just going in the studio to record some of my okay. stuff, so it was working with an engineer. You know, so, um, I wasn't really scared. I just didn't. I, I had worked at home. My father bought me a, a small reel to reel recorder when I was a kid. Cool. So I learned how to do what they called SOS, which was sound on sound. Cool. Now it's multi tracking. Yeah. Uh, it's digital l layering. So um, I already knew really how to record my voice with my voice okay. and knew what I wanted. So I played bass. You're already producing. Yeah. I played bass and I played guitar. And then they had a drummer who came in. And then I did some keyboard stuff, and that was kind of it. Um, you did everything but the drums? Uh, pretty much, That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, like Prince in a way, like played all the instruments. I just Impressive. knew I just knew what I wanted on my songs. Yeah, you know? that's great. So. I know that you said that you played uh, and diff different types of uh, music and things like that. Your dad mm -hmm. wanted you to just steer more like into like gospel or Christian, mm -hmm. you just said. Right, right. Now, you've done a few different types of music from what I've heard, like on iTunes and things like that. It's kind of mm -hmm. country, it's what I feel like, a little bit bluesy, maybe. I think that, I think that people maybe it might be country now. Country now. What like, country music yeah. is now is, I was I was a southern rock artist. Southern rock. So No, I've heard, I would have said that too. Yeah, I yeah. can hear that, yeah. So yeah. southern rock is what, what my ilk was. I mean, I, I opened for Bonnie Raitt and Delbert McClinton and people like that when I was when I was a teenager and then moving on up from there you're talking about the southern acts uh, like your Leonard Skinner's and 38 specials and Atlanta Room section I worked with them and did all the background vocals for them so it was more the southern you know style of rock which is what country music is now if you're listening to yeah. Miranda Lambert or, or Jason Aldean that was really the ilk that I was doing then. It was just not in, in Nashville sense. at that point. Yeah that yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. Okay so yeah that makes sense. You may or may not know, but many famous singers got their start in the church. Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, Mariah Carey, Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Sam Cooke, Elvis Presley, <laughs> and John Legend, and many, many, many more. Who is it? It's Baby. Who? Baby. Ba baby with the Department of Homeland Security? Baby Landshark Baby. 
Oh, I, I don't know who that is. Go away. Open the door. There's people here. Uh. Give me all your guitars, or you're going to get this banana is that right thing where it counts. Loaded? Yeah, it's loaded. With potassium. With love! It's bananas for you. Thanks. You're welcome. I like bananas. I know. That's why I brought it. Do you know the proper way to open a banana? There's no proper way to open a banana, Jesse. Well, yes, there is. You have to do it from, from this part. No, you don't. Yeah? Really? Yeah, you pinch, and then... You learned something new today. Yeah, I did. Who fucking showed you this? The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Ralph Machio. Yeah. Let's have a combo. Let's do it. How you doing? How you been, man? Super good. Cool. All right. So everybody out there, this is Jesse Owen Aston, J-O-A, Mama Jan's left arm. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So this is a space where you create. Yeah. I spend most of my time in here. Cool. Yeah. You create your original music in here. Original music, also work on whatever productions that we're working on, and um, sometimes I draw, sometimes I read, sometimes I write, sometimes I... Really? Everything in here? Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Yeah. So tell me what it's like working with Jan. Uh, Jan is incredible. Um, we have a really good relationship, I suppose, uh, in how we work together. I feel like the things that I lack, she brings. The things that she lacks, I bring. Cool. Uh, it's Give me an example. Um, for instance, we, we, we fight constantly on where's the right place to put tension, like in a song. OK. Um, I'll fight for it in one place, and she'll fight for it in another place. Cool. Um, which I find really interesting, because we hear tension from two different sides. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's one way that we kind of like complement each other. Also, I tend to like more modern electronic sounds, and Jan's more organic sometimes, and more into like uh, more raw material, mm, right. uh, which I enjoy too. But that culmination of two per things comes fusion. together nice. And yeah. she's also just a lovely person. She really is. Yeah. She's such a lovely person. I love sure. her so much. Yeah. And I know that, like I said, she calls you her left arm. So I don't know what she would do without you. That's become my nickname. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Cool. Do you also do your own original music? I right? do. Yeah. yeah. So do well, tell me really quick how you got into music. OK, so music. I really wanted to be a baseball player. Mm -hmm. I really was like a little league baseball player. I wanted to be a pitcher. Mm -hmm. And guitar was like nothing that I ever thought of. And um, one day, I was at baseball tryouts. I was probably 10, 10 years old. And I like my arm had been hurting me that day. I didn't really understand why. And then I pulled back to throw a ball from third base to first base, and my arm literally snapped. What? Like, I had a cyst in my right arm. Uh, uh, ouch. So, like, in the middle of the throw, no. it broke, right? So, yeah, it really hurt. And then I was in a cast for almost six months. So I had this guitar that someone had given me at some point. It just sat in the corner of my room. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I couldn't play baseball anymore, um, I just started gravitating more and more towards the guitar. So I actually learned how to play guitar with a cast on my arm. It's crazy. Whenever I first learned. Really cool. uh, and then from that point on, it's just. Uh, and you're right handed. So you're right -handed, yeah, yeah. strumming here with the I was like, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> so, um, Interesting story. Yeah. Baseball just became a thing that faded into the background, and guitar was on. So. I'm glad it did, because you're an amazing musician. Well, thank you. You really are. When did you first become a vocal coach? Like, when did someone like say, "You're a vocal coach," you know? And you're still singer songwriter, but that it didn't it didn't happen exactly that way. Okay. Uh, I think when I was saying earlier about the progression of just being in studios and helping other artists. Okay. Right? Um, there was a, a natural vernacular that occurred with just communicating with them and, and doing, and then I got into doing production because I've been in studios my entire life. Okay. So that became kind of natural, and then. 
um, I, I was buying a piece of gear. I was at Clark Music down on Ponce de Leon in Atlanta. All right. And I was buying a drum machine because I wanted to do some demos at home. Okay. And uh, that's when technology had, you know, progressed at that point. Yeah. But uh, I was talking to the guy, um, Bob, that owned Clark Music, and I told him, you know, what machine I wanted. He said, you know, the guy next door has one of these. He owned, And he owned a rock and roll guitar school. Cool. The guy's name was Steve Dukes. And so I walked next door and was talking to him about the, the gear. He had one that was almost brand new and he was just going to sell it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up buying it from him, but in, in the conversation, he said, you know, he said, you're that, he knew me singing around town. I was a, a rock chick singer. He <laughs> said, I've got a guy that's losing his voice. Mm -hmm. And he's in a, he was in a real popular band called the Torpedoes. And he said, do you think you could help him? And I said, sure. Wow. I, 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 I was going to give it a shot anyway. Yeah. So I went in and I started working with, with this guy. His name was Merrill Jackson. And I started working with him. and. It, what I knew to show him to do to help him really made a difference for his performance. Cool. And his voice was going down every time they were singing in clubs. Mm -hmm. And this is a construction worker dude. A lot of rock and roll singers back then had secondary jobs. Sure. He was construction worker, he was smoking, he was drinking. Oh, yeah. Probably doing some blow, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so bottom line was I, I helped him hydrate, mm. helped him learn how to warm up and cool his voice down and to leave the alcohol off and drink more water. Yes. And it made a difference to his vocal performances, so then he wanted to come back and start working on more form, more technique. Yeah, right? that's awesome. So bottom line is what what I did made an impact then. And so what I what I started doing was just working with some of the other guitar students that wanted to come in and it just got to be a thing and I got it known blossomed as, from there. I got known as the rock vocal coach. <laughs> and then there was Rob Thomas. And then there was Matchbox Twenty. That's right. Yeah, Rob Thomas. And yeah. when that happened, it completely changed the whole landscape for me. That's really yeah. cool. You want to talk about your mama for a minute? Sure. I love her so much. Sweet, Happy to talk about Betty. Sweet Betty. Yep. Sweet Betty. This is another thing that I get from your Instagram when you share and then pictures and stuff like that. You love your mama so much. I do. I know you My do. mother's a great woman. I, I, you know, I have the privilege of being her daughter, but in, in spite of that, I recognize that my mother is, uh, is a, a very extraordinary woman. She's lived for 94 years now and has had a lot of, uh, a lot of things. You know, she grew up in the Great Depression. She grew up, uh, she experienced, you know, Pearl Harbor Day. She remembers that. Uh, she grew up in, in great poverty and, and, and her and my dad, you know, they, they made their own way. My dad was in World War II. Dad died in, in 2010 and, and even after uh, her and mom and dad were married for 62 years you know she lost the love of her life mm -hmm. and and still you know still made her own way as a as a single widow at that point uh, she had a stroke two days before the pandemic hit us and we didn't know if she was going to live she's lost her breast to you know breast cancer oh my both her hips replaced so there's so many things she's, she's blind in one eye i mean my mother has uh, overcome she's an overcomer and she's taught me to, to prevail, to, to have, you know, to believe in myself and to know that I can do, that I can pursue. And her, her motto is if she has a pulse, she has a purpose. And so I believe that. And I, I watch her with her arthritic hands, 94 years old, all bent up. And she takes notes down when she's watching her church service of all the people that are in the hospital or infirmed or have lost someone or all the new widows. And she sits there and she writes them handwritten cards and prays over each one of those every week. It's an amazing thing. It's so humble to watch that and to think all of this other stuff that we think is so important, and yet my mother is still communicating her love and the love of Christ just by writing a note that encourages somebody. It's beautiful. Um, and, and so that, that to me is the essence of, of life and what we're supposed to do is we're really supposed to help other people and, and to help other people shine is what I think I do best. I love that. See, I knew I was gonna do that. <laughs> I love it. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So if, if there were one thing or, or a way that you wanted people to remember you or there was something that you wanted to have be said about you, what yeah. would that be? Hmm. I, I mean, I think what I just said, that I helped other people shine. Yeah. Um, yeah. By, by loving on them and, and by just helping people to be better at what they do. I mean, I, I, it, it's important to me to strive to be the best. Yes. And not because I'm perfect, not because I will ever achieve the best, but to be able to do my best in it, I think that's the most important thing. And 
um, helping people feel good about that, feeling solid, giving them the skill set to where they, okay, they can believe and they can know that they can go do that. And, and also help them be grounded enough to understand that there is always something greater than who you are, who you think you are, and, and to believe in something, you know, greater than yourself. This is what I'm talking about. Tea time. <laughs> Did you know that many singers have actually lost their voices? Some have recovered and some haven't. There's many reasons why vocalists lose their voices. Acid reflux is a huge reason why people lose their voices. Vocal granulomas, mm, those are gross. And Steven Tyler even burst a blood vessel. Side note, I'm his personal fairy and I helped heal him. <laughs> but you can also get things like tonsillitis, mononucleosis, the kissing disease, and viral illnesses. Just remember though, if a singer or songwriter, or vocalist, musician, band, whatever, if they've had to cancel because their singer has lost their voice, have pity on them because they need to take breaks. They need rest. Not like us fairies. We need no breaks. We're supernatural. And here's some tea for you. Hey, it's Jesse Owen Aston here to tell you that nobody cares and nobody puts baby in the corner. Do you have a favorite guitar? Um, my favorite guitar is actually in the shop right now. Ah, is that broken? No, no, and just working on it, making it better. Cool. It's the main guitar that I play live. It's the one that's got real power painted on nice, it. Nice, yeah, nice. So. Well, do you think you could play a little bit for us? Uh, sure. For me? Sure. What and you're a crib? A baby's crib? Um, I don't know. A little something, maybe? Uh, I forgot that we were going to do this. It could be a the acoustic one, you know? It could be anything that you want. Uh, let's see. Here, I'll play you the first thing um, okay. that I ever learned on guitar. The first thing you ever learned? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember it properly. Still one part of that that I always Still. mess up, but you, you do? didn't know what it was. I didn't I did. even know. See, none of us know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Well, I know you've got a lot of gigs coming up in Atlanta. Yes. Everybody, check them out. World is watching. Also, JOA. And they've got me new music coming out all the time. Yeah, well, get especially this, this year. Yeah. yeah, Spotify, iTunes, all these yeah, yeah. places. Look me yeah. up. Look them up for sure. And you owe me something, by the way. What did I owe you? A t shirt. Oh, mm -hmm. a t shirt. Yeah, the well, t shirt. Fortunately for you, I have it right here. <laughs> ah! Bam! All right. He's been begging me for a t-shirt for like a year and a half. So Forever. Anyway, today is the day. Finally got it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, love you. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a bit much. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, Jesse. Bye. Bye. Okay. You know, will you call me? You call me? Okay. Promise? Promise. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.
about how about hand the banana off, say the thing that you said, mime doing the little the breaking of the banana, and then it can move we into can mime it. Yes. That, that's fine. Because we have the actual on the rubber shot. Okay. So and hand the banana editing mime magic it. to yeah. the actual like feeling. Don't feel the banana. Don't feel it. Okay. Talk about it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you can even yeah. pretend like you're feeling it okay. if you want. And then after that, let's have a combo. Go ahead and pull your chair. See that bar cut. Yeah. Nobody puts baby in a corner. Hi, I'm Katie Santos, and no one puts baby in a corner. No one baby corner yet. <laughs> I already said it. You already said it. Nobody puts baby in a corner.